Okay, so what I'm going to do here is use a Backtrack 5 box to basically exploit uh, a Windows 7 uh, Windows Server 2008 and a Windows XP Professional box. So the first thing to do is I have been given the three IP addresses of the three machines. However, I don't know which machines are which. So I'm going to start off with an Nmap scan and I'll go ahead and start with the first of the three IP addresses. I was given a dot .73 dot 74 and a dot 75 so here you can see so here you can see that the uh, 73 box is a Microsoft Windows XP Service Pack 2 and you can also see that it is vulnerable to the MS08067. That's exactly what we want to see because that's what I'm going to go after for an attack. I'm going to use Armitage. It's in the Metasploit framework and it works as a GUI to attack with very quickly rather than taking any time to actually type in any commands most of it is automated and it does it for you now that Metasploit's Armitage is up and running let's go ahead and we'll scan for our hosts I'm just going to do a quick scan with the OS detect for each IP address Okay, I'm going to go ahead and as soon as this is done scanning, we'll begin searching for attacks and then we'll attack these three machines. Sometimes when it labels the machines, it doesn't always label them exactly correctly. Um, usually that doesn't matter when it's Vista 7 or Windows Server 2008. They generally all seem to act kind of the same. Alright, so we know that 73 is vulnerable to the SMB MS0867, and we also know that it's running Service Pack 2. So then after setting those uh, defaults for the target, we just use a reverse connection so that the XP machine thinks that it's initiating the connection to us. Now that the exploit has been triggered, you can see I have a red box around the XP machine with some glowing lightning bolts running through it. 
and I've got an interpreter session open. So that being the case, I'm going to go ahead and dump the hashes, hoping that we have a lazy system administrator who's using the same hashes to set up the systems on more than one machine. Here you see we have the administrator account. I'm going to go ahead and try to authenticate on both of these machines simply using a PS exec login with the administrator's credentials. It failed on this machine, so we'll try it on this machine. Ah, now the system administrator for these two systems has been a little bit lazy and has used the same password setting up each of these two systems. So now we're going to go ahead and dump the hashes for our second system and see what other passwords we can come up with. Ah, look, we have some other users and some other passwords that possibly we can use to access this machine with. And you can see that we also have a domain controller that we've just cracked the hashes on and there's a couple of client PCs it looks like that are actually hooked up to this domain controller. So let's go ahead and try to use one of these other well first before we do that let's go ahead and do some interacting And we'll set up a user account on this domain controller. And we will attempt to see what the name of the domain is. Let's try to open this again. Oh, there we go. Now we've got a command prompt. So then let's type a net view. This command should show us, ah, this shows us what PCs then are connected to this domain controller. And then let's also try a net view uh, forward slash domain. This should show us our domains. Ah, look, here we go. Chicken Coop is the main domain name. So then let's go ahead and try to log into the 74 box on that domain. We will use this Christian account and see if that works. Then we'll try the chicken coop domain. Uh, and look, now we've gained access to all three machines. So, now that we've gained access to them, oh, it looks like we're running 2008 Service Pack 2, Microsoft Windows 7 Service Pack 1, and Windows XP Service Pack 2. Let's go ahead and see if we can interact with this domain controller a little bit more and see what is actually on this machine. Let's just browse the files. I'm hoping that since this is the chicken coop domain and that I've been trying to hack the chicken coop domain for a while, that this may also be one of their main web servers or file transfer servers. That being the case, I'm going to try to corrupt their web page. Oh, look, they have an INET pub folder. That's normally the default folder to put a web page and it looks like they have an ISS start and an index.htm file so what I'm going to do is since I've already been tracking this website and I'm going to replace their index.htm file with this index.htm file that I have created 
so we'll just simply upload the file that I have. And then we will browse to their web page to verify that I have changed their system. Currently on the other systems, this is what their website looks like. I'm going to change this website to something else. And here I can verify that I have actually changed the face of their website to something completely different than what they originally had. Just to prove that I'll go to one of the other boxes and refresh the page. And you can see the page has actually been changed. And that concludes my Armitage attack of these various machines. We can still do some more damage than that if we want uh, by uploading or changing more files, deleting files, creating user accounts or backdoors to each of these systems, or we can just be really nasty and start shutting them down remotely on users. Um, it's completely really up to you at this point. Once you've got them hacked, you can do almost anything you want with them.